In this video, I'm going to be making this kitchen box for my truck camper. Uh, this is the truck camper here behind me, and if you haven't seen the video on that, I'll put a link to it on the screen. But this is pretty much just a box that'll hold everything I need when I'm cooking um, on like weekend camping trips or whatever. So I hope you enjoy the video. Here's a closer look at what I've done so far. This is pretty much, I started with some three quarter inch plywood and I went, you know, a rectangle, just butt jointed. And then I took some half inch plywood and I stuck it on the faces. Next, I did what I do with a lot of my small boxes in my videos, and I just cut on the table saw all the way down it to make a, sort of like a trunk, right? Um, next, I cut the trunk piece down the middle to make these two doors, and all this was done really with just the table saw. In hindsight, I feel that maybe adding a section on top of the box that's exactly the same size as the box might not be the wisest choice in terms of reducing weight. Uh, I, I, I plan on having this sit in my back seat, and so It'd be kind of difficult to open one of these doors every time I wanted something from the inside. So stuff I want to get too often, like maybe some snacks, I could put in the top, and then it's it, you know it's a little bit more accessible. So in this part, I'm cutting down the plywood that's going to make the base of that top part, and then I'm going to cut some holes in the in the main base in the big part. And this is just because this piece gets covered up anyways. So I figured uh, save a little bit of weight and take out that wooden middle that's not really doing anything and give me a little bit more height inside if I'm really trying to squeeze something in. Uh, next I'm going to put the sides on the top little part and these side pieces are three quarters of an inch and then the long pieces are half an inch and the base is 11 30 seconds. It's all plywood and I glue and brad nail it into place however I do go back and use some of these like really thin furniture finishing screws um, on every joint in the project before I paint it I just don't do it on video because the brad nails are more than enough to hold the glue until it dries they will open like this they're gonna hinge on the outside now the reasoning for that joint to even exist is because um, I want these to turn into little tables, but it wouldn't be able to do that if, um, well, this didn't sit at the bottom of that so that it could lean on the little barn door from the bottom part. Um, now I'm going to attach the two big pieces together. Now I'm going to glue up this divider piece that I'm putting in the middle. Um, I actually am fitting it to some plastic bins and uh, that's where I'm getting the sizing from. My box is all ready to put uh, kilts on. It's just gonna seal it up. I'm hoping that it really won't be distinguishable where the different pieces are, but it will at the very least hide the edge grain of all the plywood that I've used in this project. So it'll make it nice and cohesive, and as well as give it a good base to prevent it from weathering or whatever. And uh, I have some Rust-Oleum dark green spray paint I'm gonna put on top of that. But first, uh, I'm gonna probably put four to six coats of kilts uh, to try to get a nice base on it. So what I've decided to do with the paint scheme on this box is to just make the inside of it white and then the outside of it green. As I, after painting it with kilts, I decided I really liked how the white looked on the inside. Um, the only thing is kilts doesn't make a good top coat and um, I think preferably you'd put a white enamel on it but I don't I couldn't really find one that I have. Uh, I had this set and clear enamel and um, it'll probably just be easier to spray it on because I've already put I've only put three coats of kilts on it but that was a lot of work and I don't really feel like brushing anything else on and it should work fine. Here I'm just drilling a hole to make it a little bit easier to lift this top lid out. And um, now I'm spray painting the sides green and pretty much everywhere that's on the outside is getting spray painted green and the inside is going to stay white. Now I'm cutting some slats out of this block of mahogany so that these little tables that flip out will have like a nice wooden top that hot stuff can be sat on. 
and uh, I'm gonna be over here at the drill press for a while drilling holes so that the the tops of the heads of the uh, screws can sit flush with the top of the wood you know because it's a table and I don't want the screws poking up uh, I'll put a little picture of what that looks like up on the screen It's worth mentioning that whenever I put these screws in, I make sure the hole that the screw itself goes through is plenty loose. Uh, that way it doesn't split the mahogany being so close to the ends there. And then all the holding power is just in the half inch plywood. And uh, I'm putting a nice little chamfer on all these edges just using the hand plane. And screwing it down, I just use some half inch pieces of plywood since that's what those top runners are uh, to space it out. And so these slats will actually help it sit right between the runners. And I'm just, I only show putting one in, but it's pretty much the same process of just clamping it in place and tightening the screws. Um, now I'm installing the hinges, and these hinges are pretty tedious, so I'm only showing one of them. But I did pre-drill those holes before I put the screws in. It's just, it takes a while to put in one of these hinges. So this is actually one of the feet and I'm having to notch it so that the doors won't look clear. And um, what I did is I ran it down the fence by the table saw to make this cut, but obviously I don't want this rounded part. So I'm going to use a saw and a chisel to remove this extra little bit of material. So now I'm going to attach the legs. Now, this here's a good look at the legs. They, they have a taper, a bevel around the edges uh, on the ends here, because uh, it's kind of kind of stick back some. And there's also a rounded out part around this hole, and that's because the rope, and that's because the rope is actually going to like rub against the edge of it whenever it gets pulled, and you don't want like a sharp edge rubbing into the rope. So those are all rounded in. And um, I, I'm gonna attach it with five screws. There's a little recess here for the door because the door sits, it, it's even, but it sits a little bit past the um, bottom. And I think it's just cause like the a ton of layers of paint that I put on it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I do my little rope handles. So first you're gonna get two pieces of matching rope and this is white rope. And then I took apart these bungee cords to get this really stretchy one. And that's kind of how the system works. Um, now, which, what I did here is just um, doubled it up and then took the end that was like the loop and tied it in just like the basic knot. Take these two ends and run them through the holes. Alright, now pull the you know, knot all the way tight so that these two are tight and tie it in a knot just like so. It's exactly what I did on the other side. And I've never had these knots come out. Uh, now, don't waste a whole lot over here because it's going to get tangled and stuff under your box if you have too much rope. Now, that's going to determine the length of your handle. So, I, I, I like it. I think this is a good length for the handle. And um, if you want to, you could tie it up here. But basically, that knot will make it where the weight all rests on these knots instead of these these knots with the bungee cords. And, you know, these bungee cords probably... This is a pretty heavy box. It'd probably struggle. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Also, this is good if, if you want your handles, if they're not the same length, you, I could always come back here and retie this knot to uh, lengthen or shorten one of the, the handles. Where like a more complicated knot comes into play. And the reason for this is you want these to be tight because when they're tight, they'll be, you know, closed and you don't, but you don't want them like too tight because you want it to be able to open all the way and they can only stretch so much. So you are on this design. If you wanted to say, get more travel, you could probably use your cord to attach all the way, you know, caddy corner, but it, it would be a lot more complicated. And I think this is simple enough. Um, so the kind of knot I do, it's called a taut line. What you do is you, you put it under, put that you're working in under go over it two more times and go down 
and then around back in. I, it's probably, I'm probably not too good at explaining it, but it's called a taut line. And basically what it lets you do is, it kind of lets you use it like a backpack strap so I can like tighten it or loosen it. And then that way I can adjust it till there's like enough bungee cord that it, it, it pulls it in enough, but not, so it's not, they're not too hard to pull out. Okay, so I thought I would talk about um, what I did on the inside of the doors here. I didn't do it on camera because I, I was really just kind of making it up and um, experimenting around with a few things. So um, that's why I didn't show the process. But pretty much what you have is there's three of these for each piece of plexiglass. These are shelf pins, so they're meant to be stuck in and then um, I guess screwed in. I've never really seen these with a hole, but I was just kind of browsing around in the hardware trying to find something to attach. Um, now, in the hindsight, it would have been better just to get these little brackets. They're kind of like they're kind of like these brackets, but without the second hole. So, like this, but without a peg here, it's just a hole. And um, you know, because all what I did is I drilled into the sides so that the peg would sit there, and then and then I uh, used the little uh, flathead bolt with the nut, a tiny little nut on the back. And I mean, it works fine. It's it's pretty rigid. This is the right side, of the right door, and this piece of plexiglass is attached the same way you saw there. But instead of having one in the middle, it has two on each side. And I'd have to say that this is probably a lot stronger. This is also a piece of mahogany, and it's just attached using two of these brackets on each side. And since the piece was too thin to put any screws into, I um, and then the holes on these all line up. I just used a nut uh, and a bolt to sandwich the wood between these two pieces and then and then use little screws to attach it to the wood and then of course this is just a little bungee cord um, it's only attached using these little eyelets here's the completed box i may not be able to show you the construction process very well but i can tell you where this project was difficult and some things you might consider now if you're going to paint it that 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 was really the hardest part of this project the painting took forever hours of painting I probably could have done it easily in one weekend if I just sprayed some clear coat on it, like I usually do. But um, this took forever to dry, especially with the cold weather. Um, so that's another thing, if you're in cold weather, bring it inside where it's warm, above 50 degrees-ish is usually good. The problem is overspray. So like, uh, it's it, even if you're not pointing the can at the thing and like it's completely on the other side, there's just those little green uh, paint particles floating around in the air and they'll settle on stuff that you would never think is going to get on it. And, um, and, and for me, I taped up some of the edges and green still got on them. Uh, I mean, I'm not an amazing painter by any means, so that's obviously why. And uh, I got it good enough to where I like it, but it took a bunch of going back and forth on the paint. And I never did talk about these latches. These are just some latches I already had. I'll throw some close-up pictures of them in. Hinges are piano hinges. They're actually like I cut it myself, so at Home Depot you can buy a four foot piano hinge for $11 and one foot ones for $10, so it's one more dollar to buy four times as much and you can really easily cut them yourself with the hacksaw. I, um, I hammered the, the, like the barrel back down around the pin to try to keep the pin in, uh, but it does like sitting all the way out like this, it's really, really strong. Another thing I'd like to talk about are these little magnetic catches. You can buy these for cabinets from Home Depot or Lowe's, and uh, pretty much they, they're magnets. I mean, all they are is magnets with a nice little mount. And um, that's why these two screws are close together on that last board I put on, is so that they'll kind of grab to the magnet. And you can hear this, the, the biggest flaw in this that's gonna drive me crazy is that this, this piece of ply was just a little bit warped. You can hear it catch the magnet um, but yeah you can hear these catch um, and they're pretty strong uh, these holes I you saw me drill the hole for the rod uh, to go in them because I was thinking oh, I'll put my fingers down and pinch it but I can't really get my fingers in there and like the rod would be weaker anyways so I think it works better to just like put my fingers in like that and then just lift up I hope y'all enjoyed the video. This is the finished box right here. I'm sure you've gotten enough of it over the course of this video. But if you still have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm usually pretty quick to get back to people.